Hello and welcome to the next Crusader Kings 3 Game of Thrones Dev Diary. This one is about knighthood. So if you recall in Crusader Kings 2 Game of Thrones, the knighthood was pretty easy to do. All you had to do was just right click on somebody and offer them a squireship and then once they reach 16 you can just knight them. And you can always just buy it. It looks like they're doing more of a deep dive into it, making it more of a gameplay. I know that the knight system in Crusader Kings 3 is pretty important, but you can only have like, what, 8 knights in the base game or something like that? 20 knights? And that they were like commanders in your army and they just give you big bonuses, so I'm wondering what would happen here. If they're used as gameplay for Crusader Kings 3 the same way, then... Not sure. I think it's just going to end up being a trait. So, Dylan over here was the script writing on the team. Uh, he did a dev diary a few months ago about the events. Uh, he wanted to deep dive into the knighting system. He wanted to answer three basic questions. Uh, can we make it more difficult while balancing the gameplay and fun aspect? And how can we better represent the ability for non-Faith of the Seven characters to become knights? And he talks about how easy it was to be knighted, like I mentioned in the previous game. And how non Faith of the Seven become knights, like Jorah Mormont, Barrison Sell Me Squires, and Dance with Dragons, and so on. Order satisfied Crusader Kings 3 engines, ability to organically answer these three questions, we have implemented a fairly simple yet robust squire to knight system. And he talks about the squire trait, becoming a squire. I have here Prestige plus point ten a month, attraction opinion. Vilar is serving as a knight's attendant with the hope of one day becoming a knight of his own. Okay, interesting, interesting. Let's exit out of that one. The first stage of the system begins at squirehood. Starting at age nine, male characters of any faith of any culture may be taken as a squire by a knight. That's assuming they aren't physically crippled or mentally unwell. To be specific, having any f uh, of the following traits would disqualify a knight from serving as and becoming a squire. Blind, dwarf, club-footed, one-legged, one-handed, yada, etc, etc. Considering these traits are also bar you from being knighted, more on that later though. Becoming a squire can be done with two primary methods. First and foremost, you can use the Offer Squirehood interaction on eligible characters, which is here. Offer to Squirehood. So you can offer to squire somebody, Vilar becomes a squire, you, you gain 150 prestige, gain 50 opinion of you. Oh, so that would be really interesting to make a Lord's son like you more. Like, you get, yeah, minus one a year, so that's not bad. So you'll have about 50 opinion, of at least 20 opinion for a good... 20 years so that'd be very impressive go back and becoming a squire can be done yeah offering squirehood knights who do not currently have a squire can propose this interaction any eligible character who's their vassal courtier or who's the same court as them okay so you can't offer to squire your lord's children or you can't do like I would do in Crusader Kings to Game of Thrones, find a member of the King's Guard and just be like, hey, train the train my son up. But always try to find King's Guard members to train my children, and your children will become amazing characters. But it looks like it's only in your court and vassals, which makes sense. You don't wanna have the king become your you know, become your squire. Or and you know, so on. Secondly, there are a number of events that spawn that you have characters make offers of squirehood to your children and to yourself if you are eligible, of course. For example, a humble hedge knight may soon arrive at your court and ask one of your children as a squire. Our nearby lord may offer their son to you. Most esteemed lord Walder of the Crossing, I am waiting to inform you that my son is of age of squirehood, perhaps in order to uh, effort to align our houses more closely together, that my son serves as a squire. This able-bodied lad is eager to one day become a knight. Can only ask to consider my proposal. That's pretty cool. Pretty impressive. They can just offer you knighthood. Or offer you uh, to take on their son as a squire. 
After becoming a squire, player can view the squire knight relationship via the relations tab. Okay. There we go. There's his squire. Okay, that's cool. Lovers, words, squire, knight. Oh, that's cool. There's a knight tab here. I wonder what that would do. This is exactly what a squire does. So what does a squire do? Carriages will be subjugated. Uh, subjected. <laughs> subjugated. The quarterly, approximately every four months, squirehood events. Okay, so we'll have squirehood events, cleaning, shining. Okay, so it looks like that would uh, involve some education traits, which would be pretty cool. Events aren't the only thing that can affect this system. For example, we have an interaction with the new Crusader Kings 3 Game of Thrones lighting system, Train Squire. Train Squire gives the knight character a specifically one of the four aspects of knighthood. Ah. As a squire, Vilar is my responsibility to train them in the ways of knighthood. I've decided a particular skill with him today, but I need to select one. Oh, okay, so you can have him adjust his traits, adjust his stuff through... Oh, that's interesting. Training swordsmanship would be really cool, because you could, you could increase his prowess and such. That would be fun. So, uh, you'd really want your son as a squire, as your own squire. So you could just have more... Uh, was it just maneuverability when it comes to their training, which is cool. The benefit of the, using this system is that it will act as a filter to weed out characters who are simply not meant to be knights. Now, every character will have personality to earn knighthood. For example, Martin says, we, train, we tend to think of squires as teenage boys, knights in trainings, but that is the only part of the truth. Historically, there are many men who spent their entire lives as squires. That's true. They never became knights. It was quite common to have a 30 and 40 year old squires, even some in their 50s. Some men perhaps did not have the wealth to become knights. Which is true. Knights did have to pay for their equipment back in the day. Additionally, using this system helps us answering a vital question. What happens in an event should a squire's knight dies? Well, under this system, a squire's standing is completely preserved. Should they ever find a new uh, knight, it will be possible to resume the journey without issue. And it looks like that is the alert. And I can see a squire's progress. It's a recurring event that measures the squire's standing. Ah, squire's progress. Trick is showing very little progress as a squire, but progress nonetheless. They have a long way to go, but they are learning the basic concepts that surround knighthood. It's pretty cool. And then you can gain. Ah, please enjoy the alert icon. Okay, so that's the alert. Hey, your squire is having an event. Pretty interesting. And that's the squire's progress. Okay. The knight trait. Ah, so this is the knight trait. A fame trait. Okay. You get a lot more prestige, a lot more attractive opinion. Character was knighted, sworn to defend. Uh, sworn before the eyes of gods and men to defend those who cannot defend themselves, protect all women and children, obey their ca uh, captains, liege lord, king, to fight bravely, do such other tasks that are laid upon them. However hard or humble or dangerous they may be. It's pretty cool. And yeah, squares, uh, enough standing via knight. Uh, okay, so great. That means it's time to become a knight. And you could offer knighthood. Or you could, which becomes available, the second method, which will available at a later point, or the squares standing will involve ceremonies. Squares is sick accepted an offer of knighthood under this method will be allowed to ask of the faith of seven knighting style ceremony represented through events ah knighting ceremony okay my knight lord paramount taiwan of the has agreed to formal knighting ceremony i report to the sept in seven days i will stand vigil before the father should i be successful i will be knighted by sir taiwan very cool character will stand vigil oh that's buying a knighthood Stand Vigil in the Sept. Oh, okay, so the same thing. Okay. Uh, sept in the ceremony is always guaranteed. A cap character's knight may reject their choice. Failing his Vigil may even have consequences concerning the character's ability to achieve knighthood. Okay, so you could fail the event to become a knight, which is pretty cool. Non-square characters may also become knight. So you could just buy your knighthood, which is right here. Social pressure forbids the sale and purchase of knighthood. They will always be close willing to sell knighthood for a right price. 
for circumstances uh, unimportant, I will not be made a knight at this point in life. From influence in life, I can definitely fix that. Family would be notified. Okay, so you just purchased being a knight. If you win a tournament, you may be knighted by the host or participant who has the knight trait, particularly participating in a battle where the commander is a knight. May also earn your character's knighthood. That's pretty cool. I like that. Wandering hedge knight may knight you if you show up in court. Ah, female knights. Yep, women can be knights. You just gotta have high prowess, major prestige amount, martial skill rating is high. You have knighted Brienne. There you go. You just knighted somebody. Very cool. And some closing remarks. And using these interactions, decisions, and events, faith does play a small role. For example, characters with faith do not uh, of the knighthood tenant are less likely to affect being a knight. Okay. Uh, you should note the vanilla CK3 knight system is a little different. Okay, this is what I mentioned. Vanilla equivalent to knights are renamed to captains. Captains function just like vanilla knights. Okay, so captains, generals. Okay, I get you. The summary more or less of the new squire knight system. Uh, I hope to make the process of a squire and knights more organic in the world that CK3 generates. Who, after all, has a better story than Bran Stark actually becoming a knight on King Joffrey's Kingsguard in a save game? Please note, neither of these characters will be playable on first release. Obviously, yeah, uh, the only bookmark we're going to have is Robert's Rebellion in the very beginning. What is this? Just kidding, here's a changelog to the first update of the official closed beta. Here's the tenants as well. Okay. Craven's a sin, Brave's a virtue. And this is the closed beta. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Beta test. This is the closed beta. I think this is for the uh, developers. Major changes gameplay, Kingsguard, instantly reappointed their position, should not be noticeable. Gameplay, pilgrimage, you no longer get stuck. Players uh, preventing characters from attending future activities. Liberty Faction is made impossible. Oh, I think that's good. Spy masters no longer reveal their own spies. Infinite Jon Snow glitch solved when Rhaegar dies. Infinite Tourney of Harrenhal schemes fixed. A lot of gameplay updates, a lot of stuff, but that's cool. There's actually a change log. You see this, guys? There's a change log for the Crusader Kings 3 Game of Thrones. Mod. How long have you been waiting for this? Three years? That's it's real. It's right here. It's right in front of us. They're working on it. People are playing the Crusader Kings three months, albeit it's probably the devs, but still. I think that's one of the coolest things that I've seen all year. So thank you guys for watching. This is really awesome. We have a change log. <laughs> that's all all there is to say. Hope you guys enjoyed. I will have more dev diaries and we're almost there. We're so close. Crusader Kings 3 Game of Thrones mod for being released.